Hello and welcome to Otten Math, another exciting lesson. In the prior lesson we talked about uh, properties of quadrilaterals. Now we're going to talk about how we prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. These past two lessons, very important as far as geometry is concerned. Uh, you'll see recurring uh, information in uh, both of these lessons throughout the rest of the course. Okay, so the first uh, first way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram is if we have both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So by definition, right, we have uh, if I have two opposite sides which are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so how how does this hold true? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw an auxiliary line AC. I know that BC and AD are parallel. I know DC and AB are parallel. So alternate interior angles uh, for BC and AD are the green angles. And I have alternate interior angles for the parallel lines AB and CD, which are the blue angles. So I can say that by angle side angle, angle blue, blue, AC, which is congruent to itself, and then the green angles, by angle side angle, I have two triangles that are going to be congruent by, uh, by angle side angle. If that's the case, I know that AB and CD are congruent, BC and AD are congruent. And we really don't need to prove that because uh, we know by definition that if we have a quadrilateral, both sides, both, op both pairs of opposite sides are congruent then we have a parallelogram. But just to go through the process initially, to show you how we prove the two triangles that we formed out of the uh, quadrilateral to be congruent, uh, to get opposite sides congruent. Okay, moving on. Next is, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we say that's a converse of the property. All right, so, uh, Let's see how we prove this particular um, this particular uh, way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. All right. So again, we're going to draw our uh, auxiliary line AC. I know that AC is congruent to itself. I know that AB is congruent to CD, and I know that BC is congruent to AD. So again, I have two triangles that are congruent: ABC and CDA by side side side. If they're uh, congruent by side, 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 then I know that I have my corresponding angles that are congruent, which happen to be alternate interior angles. I shouldn't really call them corresponding, but they're corresponding parts of the triangles that are congruent. And if I have these two pairs of alternate angles that are congruent, I can prove that now both BC and AD and AB and CD are going to be parallel because if I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Uh, so now I know that ABCD is a parallelogram. All right, moving on. And by the way, I have five of these properties. So this was number three. So if we recall, let's just label these here. The first one was basically the definition of a parallelogram. This was number one. And we took a look at how we could create two congruent angles from the parallelogram. And then number two was both pairs of opposite sides. And again, we drew that auxiliary line to prove the two triangles congruent and then formed two um, pairs of alternate interior angles that were congruent to show that we had two parallel lines. Okay, number three, if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So note here that it's not, if I have one pair of sides that are congruent and then another pair of sides that are parallel, a different set, then it's a parallelogram. So this does not work. All right, if I have just one pair, so let me just erase some things here. So let's go back. If I have, not necessarily, I should say, it doesn't work necessarily. So if I have one side that's uh, congruent and the other side that's parallel uh, doesn't necessarily work because remember if I draw this line here and I say that this is parallel here and now I have an isosceles trapezoid and I don't have a parallelogram. 
Okay, so let's just be careful about what we're given. And what we're given is that I have one pair of opposite sides that's both uh, congruent and parallel. So let's see how we work out this particular uh, property or this particular way to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so again, I draw my auxiliary line AC. Uh, I have the red angles that are alternate interior angles that are congruent. Um, I have CD that's congruent to AB. So now I know that uh, by side angle side, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And if that's the case, then I know that uh, angle BCA is congruent to angle CDA. And that makes BC parallel to AD. Because if I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, then I have parallel lines. Now I have my parallelogram. Okay, number four, I believe. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So if the diagonals of the quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So here I've marked up the diagram. And how do we prove that this is true? Okay, so I'm going to use my knowledge about vertical angles, and I'm going to draw or label a point E, which is the intersection of the two diagonals. I know that BE is congruent to ED. I know that AE is congruent to EC. I know that angle BEA is congruent to angle CED. I know that BEC is congruent to AED. All right, so I have four triangles, two pairs of triangles that are congruent. Um, so let's just shade in this top triangle and we'll do it in black. So a triangle BEC is congruent to triangle DEA by side angle side. And then we have triangle BEA, and we'll do this in blue, congruent to DEC by side angle side. Now I know that uh, I've got another set of alternate interior angles that are congruent. Right, so here's one pair by CPCTC, Here's the other by CPCTC. So I know that BA is congruent, or I'm sorry, BA is parallel to CD. And then I have another pair of alternate interior angles from my congruent triangles, CED and AEB, that are congruent. So here, alternate interior angles are congruent. So now I know that BC is parallel to AD. Now I have a parallelogram. All right, last one. One more to go. Um, if both, and we'll label this number five. So this is the last one. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Right, so this time we're not gonna draw our auxiliary line. The proof for this is a little bit different than the second, third, and fourth. Remember, number one was basically a definition of a parallelogram. So what I'm gonna say again, and we've talked about this in the prior lesson, is that the sum of all the measures of a uh, quadrilateral are gonna equal 360 degrees. I know that the red angles are congruent, the blue angles are congruent. So I can say again that two red plus two blue equal 360 degrees. So I know one red plus one blue is equal to, uh, is equal to 180 degrees. So I also know, uh, as part of what I learned about how to prove parallel lines, that if I have two uh, angles that are on the same side of the transversal interior to the parallel lines, then those lines are going to be parallel. So I say um, BC, AD are the two lines. CD is the transversal. Uh, angle C is supplementary to angle D. Uh, and because they're supplementary, I can say then that BC is going to be parallel to AD. Uh, in the same fashion, if A is supplementary to D, uh, so now AD becomes a transversal, AB and CD become the lines. I can say that because A and D are supplementary to each other, they're on the same side of the transversal, interior to the lines, I can say that AB now is parallel to CD. And because of that, now I have ABCD as a parallelogram.